Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to continue looking at writing uh, backend servers that implement an API, and this time we're going to use a database. And before we get started, let me just talk a little bit about two verbs. One is get, and the other is post. When do we use one versus the other? Well, we use get, let me just write this word out before I <laughs> bollocks it up. When the request we're making to the server is idempotent, meaning that we're not making any changes to the server or there are no side effects to our request. A prime example of this would be a search request. We want to, we're asking Google to find something. So in that case, we're not making any changes to the database. It's just sending results back. So after, at the end of the request, that server is the same as when we, before we made the request. Post is when there are changes. We're making changes to the database. There are exceptions to this, but this is kind of a general rule. And a case here would be that we're creating an account somewhere. We're adding an Amazon account. That changes something in the database. That when we make the request, something permanently is changed in that on that web server. Or if we're ordering something on Amazon, that changes something in the web server that we use a post request. If we're searching for something on Amazon that doesn't make any changes, that uses a get. So that's kind of the distinction between a get and a post. Also, we talked previously about CRUD, and that stands for create. And let's see if you remember these. Read, update, and delete. And if you remember which verbs go with which. The create was a post, which made sense because we're making changes. Read here uses get. Update could use put or post. And delete's the easy one, which is just delete. So we're going to practice with some of these verbs. And we're going to create, we're, let's work with a to-do list manager. So we're going to create this items that we need to do on our to-do list manager. So that would be this create one. We're going to look, be able to see what our to-dos are. That'll be this read. Let's ignore update for now and just worry about deleting items. So that's kind of our goal here. So the first thing we need to do is, well, let's create that database that we're going to need. Or prior to even that, let me just initialize everything. So here I am in my... Um, I've created a new directory called pod4. So let me do that npm init. And let me install some stuff. That's the Postgres, Postgres adapter. And now let me do the same for express. Sweet. All right. And now if we looked at package.json, we'll see that we have Express and Postgres now list his dependencies. But let's go ahead and create a database file that we'll read in. And let's create, call this, I don't know, life SQL. All right. So the first thing we want to do is create a database. And let me call it life. I'm not very inventive with names. Change into that directory. And let's create a table, which is to do. And let's say there's a task we want to do. And that's of type text. And there's a priority, which is of type int. Sweet. And now, whoops, let's insert some entries. Uh, Right, XYZ report, that's a high priority. Record database video, another high priority. Go to Costco, pretty low priority, oops. Call sister, 
regarding vacation, kind of a middle priority. All right. So that looks good. Let's see if we can load that into our database server and create that database. All right, so here I am. I'm gonna go and log into my database server. Okay, let me read that in. Uh, that was called life. Okay, and that apparently created a data. Let me just zoom up here. I'm kind of hiding part of what I'm doing. Let me, um, okay, so I inserted, and let's just see if we actually selected um, or inserted those. Sweet, okay. Okay, and now we want to create a user that we can use here. So um, let me create role to do person manager. Let's say to do person with login. Okay, and then let's create a password for this person. And I'll use my handy dandy password generator program. And let's actually make the, it a little longer this time. Let's say 15. Well, let's call that good. Call this. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, stick it somewhere just temporarily. Okay, hopefully that worked. And so I have that. And now let's look at the, I have this to-do list. So I'm gonna grant uh, select. Uh, to-do person. Okay, so I granted those abilities to to-do person. All right, I think I might be good with the database. All right, so let's work on the code aspect. So let me go back to here and let me open up a new file and call it um, todo.javascript. All right, and let me um, get moving on this. So I'm going to require that express package. Whoop. I'm going to get that um, Postgres adapter. And I need one more thing. Oh, body parser. Okay, and now I realize I didn't load in or install body parser, so let's do that now. And this allows us, as the name suggests, and I probably won't do a better job explaining it, it allows us to parse the body of a request. So here we're gonna put variables, like when I want to add something to our to-do manager, I'll have the name of the task, like XYZ report, and the priority. Well, those things will be stored in the body, so I need to be able to parse those out. So that's where, or to get those values. So that's why I'm requiring this body parser.
Okay, here's my password, which I don't remember, but fortunately I typed it in there. And now I can get rid of it. I don't need it cluttering that up. Sweet. And the database was life. Okay, that looks nice. This is the stuff from before that we've worked on. I screwed up, sorry. Okay, so now we finally get to the part where we're uh, going to write the code that'll take in these requests or accept these requests and then output what we want them to output. And let's do, uh, let's, the first one let's do is get. How about that one? So we'll do, so we'll do app get. And remember the app get one was going to be, we're just going to return the list of to do's. So that seems fairly easy. And so if a person types in API, I always forget the slash. Then we're gonna execute a function. The request is this request. Our response is gonna be that response. All right, so here's where we're going to write our code. Uh, what's going to happen if someone says, please get the, and then with the address of API. So I'm going to try, and let's get that a response. And here we go, just select Splat from to do. I think that's good, but it helps to be in, have quotes there. So that's a simple request. And let me just print out that And let's return, and the way we return is do this res JSON. And if there's an error, we're just going to print that error. Let's go plus eight. All right, that looks good to me. Let me make sure I... Okay, and now let's get that code that gets everything running. Let's 
sorry. I'll just say running here. Okay. Let's see if this works. No. I keep doing the same thing. So apt get. <laughs> I don't know. It's my Linux conflicting with my JavaScript and where I should have looked where that was. Apt listen. Oh, right here. This should be apt get. Sorry for that error. Okay, so now it's running. So now I should be able to do a get request on this. And let me modify what I'm doing here. So it's just API. So I'm doing a get. And I'm calling it API. And that's it. And let me scroll a bit here and say send. And we have the results back. That's fantastic. So now we got this all working. I'll pause, get to another video of how to implement the next two things. Thanks.